Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at why your deployed Next.js app is probably asleep and has a cold boot duration. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Last week, I published a video featuring PlanetScale, MySQL, Drizzle ORM, and a quick Next.js random quote generator app. This week, I'm going to use that same app to help us learn about Next.js cold boot durations and why your app probably has one as well, which means it's asleep right now. I'll link to the video for the project in the description just in case you haven't checked it out yet. Let's quickly review how this app works. Here in VS Code, you can see I used a couple of server-side library functions stored here in the lib folder to go ahead and help pick a random quote to display. And then I included a state object in the lexical scope and it helps prevent being sent the same random quote twice in a row. Now it's not perfect and we'll talk about what could be better about this application, but overall let's just look at how it all works right now. So we have the get all quotes function, and this is what connects to the database. And then in the get random quotes function, we call the get all quotes function, and then we work out which random quote to send. And then in our default page, our home page here essentially, we get that random quote by awaiting the get random quote, which makes this an SSR, that is server side rendered component, because every time it's requested, it requests this data once again to get a new quote. Then it passes it down to this quote component, which is a client component. Let's look at the deployment of this app on Vercel. I'm in the Vercel dashboard for my project, and then I'm at the logs tab. Now here in the logs tab, you can see some requests that came in, these get requests as I got a new quote. And we can even see what the console is logging over here to the right. Now if I click on any one of these specific requests, I can see more details. And this is where we see it's all wrapped in a serverless function because Vercel is a serverless host. So everything we do on the server is basically in one big serverless function and then we have this cold boot duration here that is specified 175 milliseconds not a long time but it is there now let's look at the next one and see what information we had there oh that's just the fave icon sorry let's move to the next and now we can see here that we had another cold boot duration and so now let's look at the next one that came in and that is here. Now our previous state value is two and then it increments to three. I included that separate one just so we could see it increment. And then of course the quote values continue to change. We see what the previous one was and now the next one that it is sending. And we can look at this up above, cold boot duration is zero. So that means the function is now awake. The next request, it's zero once again. So now we see three and four. And our state on the server is going ahead and incrementing. It's keeping that state as well. So let's discuss all of this. Now by default, Vercel is a serverless host. And here I'll just quote some of this. It says, on Vercel, you can server render Next.js applications in either a Node.js runtime, which is the default with serverless functions, or you can also specify an edge runtime with edge functions. And you may be curious about the edge runtime, and I can make a separate video comparing serverless to edge as well. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Now, serverless functions, as we've seen specified here, that all of our function calls are within a serverless function, serverless functions have a cold boot, which is also called a cold start. And under the hood, Vercel is using AWS Lambda for this. You can search for Lambda cold start and find many discussions about this topic. An initial startup time known as cold boot or cold start is not unusual and is definitely not only with Vercel. I think you'll find most hosts with serverless functions have this. So if it's an issue, what can you do about it? I'm going to share a link to this article in the description by Juan Zhu. Now, apologies if I don't pronounce that correctly, Juan. And overall, this article explains how to warm a website by sending requests at regular intervals to your Next.js application. And that's essentially going to keep those serverless functions awake. And if you do that, they won't have a cold boot duration beyond that first request. So now let's get back to the logs where I can once again use my app as an example so you can see this in action. 
So here we're back in the logs and it's been seven or so minutes since I made a request. I'm going to go back to the app, make a couple of requests now and get something there. We got the same quote for just a second, but then it switched over. So it took just a little longer to get and you could play around with those durations that we're using for the CSS fade in and fade out as well. Let's go ahead and then do another one. And now we got a different quote and another different quote again. Once it woke up, essentially, is what we're saying. So see, we had just a little issue there with the first one. Okay, back in our dashboard, now it says show new logs. Let's look at the new logs. And now, once again, we're going to see that our state was lost in that time in between. See, we went from 1540 here and here, and let's scroll down to see everything we had. Our previous state was three, then we incremented it to the new state, State value of four. Remember, we're putting that in the server in a lexical scope. So now when we come up to the next request about eight minutes later, now we see our previous state has gone back to one and the new state value is two. That is because we lose that state when the serverless function goes to sleep. Now, with a traditional monolithic server that you would always have running and you just had your state there on the server, that wouldn't happen. But a serverless function, when it goes to sleep, it does, it just removes all that state. It's kind of like refreshing an app once again. And then of course your state's back to the initial state. And in my testing, between five and seven minutes is when a serverless function does go to sleep. So what does this mean for our application? Well, here's my thoughts. If a serverless function goes back to sleep, someone who waits around seven minutes or more to reload the app may actually be sent the same quote, the exact same one, once again, back to back, because the state in the lexical scope of the function is lost. So you may have considered this already, but another point being the structure of the app isn't identifying any specific user. You can see we just have this simple state up here in the lexical scope that the function can access. So without it specifying any specific user, if there's two separate users accessing the app at the same time on two different devices, the state we have in this lexical scope won't necessarily prevent a possible back-to-back -back duplicate quote from being sent anyway. That said, the more quotes you load into the database, the less likely a back-to-back -back duplicate would be served while the function's awake. And this is still a good example project for your portfolio that probably doesn't receive a lot of users at once anyway. The natural behavior for any user checking out your project will probably be to refresh the quote fairly shortly after each other refresh. And so they won't be waiting five to seven minutes to refresh the quote and everything works as you expect it to because your function has not gone back to sleep. But in the end, it's good to be able to evaluate your project, identify weaknesses that your project has and discuss them. And this is especially true during an interview. So discussing what you learned while creating a project can be the most important part. And today you've learned that Vercel is a serverless host. And unlike a traditional server, your serverless Next.js app does not always stay awake. So you will have a short cold boot duration and any values you store in a server state will not always be maintained. So now that you've learned all of this, what would you change about the random quotes application? Here's what I would do. I would want to refactor this app so it always avoids delivering a duplicate no matter how many users are making requests at the same time. And I also want it to work as expected without worrying about any cold boot from the deployed serverless function. And I don't mean to eliminate the cold boot, but I mean the cold boot as it stands can actually expire, the serverless function can go back to sleep, and then we can get a duplicate quote. And I don't want that to happen. So therefore, I eliminated any of that server state that I was keeping in lexical scope. And instead, I decided to have the client component request the data from the route handler for a random quote in the project. So let's look at the route handler quickly. And now it looks just a little different because it receives an ID. So I have that client component using more traditional React code, keep track of the previous quote ID it received, and it sends it back to the route handler with each subsequent request. So that ensures the client doesn't receive the same quote again. So that means I had to modify my function here just a little bit to also receive that ID. And then of course, if we have randomly generated that same quote once again, 
then we want to go ahead and create a different one. So the while loop still does its work to just find a different random quote if the ID matches the one that was previously received. And so with that small bit of data now being handled here with just a little bit of use state and of course a more traditional use effect, then we have refactored the code and it can handle each user requesting at the same time. They're keeping track essentially of the ID they've previously received. And so no matter how many users it works, and of course, we're not waiting for the serverless function to go to sleep and have an issue that way either. Although if you left it as it was where we were using that state in the serverless function, essentially it wouldn't go to sleep for about seven minutes. Most users would not find a problem with that anyway. I just think the new refactored code is a little more robust, takes care of some of those initial things here that we've identified, and I'm going to leave a link to the refactored code in the description. So if you've worked through the other project, then you can look at this code and refactor accordingly if you decide to. Overall, I hope learning more about how our Next.js apps are deployed helps you make decisions like this when you create your next Next.js app. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.